Welcome to the property show proudly brought to you by Ekasi Noble Property Development. Opportunities in Bears Nodia, opportunities in Ranfontein, Green Hills and Robin Park and are sought after amazing upcoming lifestyle estate which is driving everybody crazy. Everybody is just going crazy over investing in the North Riding development. Investments start from 250,000. Get in touch with the Casino Noble Property Development. It is situated at the uh, North Riding Equestrian Estate, uh, just a stone thrown away from um, Kuro Schools, around the corner from Eagle Canyon Golf Estate, just next to Reimser, next to Northgate Mall, Honeydew Police Station, Olivedale Clinic, N14, Malibongwe, um, Bears Nodier. It's a beautiful development, so do get in touch. I'll put the link in the description and speak to the good folks at Ekasi Noble Property Development. I'm very excited. Once again, I am speaking investments, financial services, real estate. But here right now, I've got a serial entrepreneur. But he's not only an entrepreneur, he's somebody who cares about the community and impacting the lives of South Africans. Who is it? He was born and raised at Soweto, a Pimville. He solves the socio-economic imbalance within communities by using the power of a collective. He does this by providing group saving clubs with a custom, um, with a custom app that connects them and, uh, and, and fast tracks their savings to access additional income opportunities. Because connected groups that have more savings and more income means a better life for the community. He has 12 years experience in banking, two masters in finance and engineering, and 25 years of family group savings culture. His name has been buzzing in the, uh, uh, in the entrepreneurship space over the past couple of years, and he's incredible. The founder of and CEO of Stockfeller, which is a fintech solution that is aimed to revolutionize a 19th century practice into a modern and tech-savvy sector that allows more than 8 million South Africans to participate in the economy of the country. And the reason why we have him here, we also, uh, because we are, you know, uh, real estate and property investors uh, and are interested in that space, we've just also bumped into his Stockfeller app, which is also solving solutions in the property space. That's the reason why he's here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to introduce you to him. I'm not going to read the entire resume. It is too long. This man has done incredible things. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Mr. Tsepo Muloi. I feel excited. like a superstar. After you read that, um, <laughs> <laughs> give me a global glow. Yeah. No, but you've done an incre incredible job, Putam. Congratulations. No, no, thank you very much, brother. I think maybe from the horse's mouth, let's mm. hear it from you. For Abantaba Bugele, who is uh, Upu Tsepo uh, Muloi and where are you from and what you're about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and take your time, ne? <laughs> we've, got, we've got all day. Yeah, are we you just sure? want to learn. It's, it's an educational <laughs> platform, yeah. No, no problem. No, look, I think uh, as, as a starting point, you know, one thing that didn't touch there, I'm actually a, a very proud uh, husband and a father of two. So I've got a little boy, the youngest, and, and uh, a daughter, um, which I take to school every morning. Uh, and, and, and I'm married to a very beautiful African woman. And I say African woman because um, she's Congolese. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm, I'm versatile like that. Uh, from Definitely from Asekasi, Pinville to be precise. I mean, uh, raised by a single parent, uh, went to Ekasi, um, then from there went to what they call Model C at that time. I'm sure it's Model Z by now. I don't know <laughs> what is it called <laughs> by now. But um, yeah, and, and from there straight on into um, studying engineering. Look, I've, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. I think let's first start there. Um, you know, so I used to sell Ama Sweet in a school, in the school yard. Um, used, to, used to do cards, birthday cards. You know, when my mom bought me a printer the first time, I used to print birthday cards. And then um, when I got to high school, I realized that I was one of the top students. Uh, and then everyone wanted to learn from me. So I started selling tutorials, started doing teaching, um, or should I say at least at that point in time, um, what we call it right now when someone is, is helping you. 
Um, he's your tutor. tutor. Thank yeah. you. Yes, yes, I want. Um, hey, so who am I? Hey, hello, Bali, I did. Mara, yeah. Then I, 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 I tutored a bit. I um, sold my tutorial um, um, uh, notes. So I've always been an entrepreneur. Found, found opportunities. But I think what became very different with this new opportunity is that it had a more impact. You know, impact from what I knew, what I known, what took me to school. So uh, you know, I tell people that if it wasn't for the family stock for Sakai, I wouldn't be where I am right now. It paid some of for, for my varsity school fees. I mean, at some point I couldn't afford varsity school fees. The stock fell stepped in. The first time I went out of the country, it was because of a stock fell. I mean, we went to Botswana. My mom got a paid out from the stock fell and she took us, she took us to Botswana. So, you know, so stock falls are a very important role in how most of us have grown up and are still growing up today. I mean, stock is still there. Seven colors, Mangfuni seven colors. It's a funeral stock fell. They are on the platform as well. I mean, Ukokwam is 70 years old. She's on the platform as well. So, so it's, it's a culture that we grow up and it's a culture that I think it has been neglected for quite a long time, not plugged in. And, and basically, that's what, that's what I do. I try to plug them in. And as I did say, Ella, take your time. You yeah. know, you don't have to rush to speak. <laughs> no problem, no problem. The first thing I'd like for us to mm. zoom into seeing that we are on the internet and we've got a lot of uh, an international audience. What is a stock fail? Hey, that's a very interesting question. So I, I, I think maybe it's Puma P stock fail. I mean, maybe that's the first part of departure. Um, you know, so during, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's an Afrikaans word, arguably, as you can, S-T-O-K-V-E-L. You know, so stock, as in from cow and fell from, from the field. Uh, back in the days, those farmers used to put stock together and therefore um, trying to bid uh, for that stock. But what, what ended up happening, because as, as communities we wanted to take part, we started our own stock fell, basically. So that's high level where it comes from. There's lots of history around it. I think if you Google it, you'll find it. But I think if we just bring it a bit closer. So uh, most stock fells are what we call informal um, 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 stock fells or informal group savings, meaning that uh, I'm around. So uh, this month, it's your round 10, C10, it's big 100 rand. We put 100 rand on the table. That's why it's And then you take a 1,000 rand, you do what you need to do with it. So that's called a rotational stock fell. Then you get ama funeral stock Stock fell. So in case something happens, we, um, there's, a, there's a burial problem. Yeah, depending. Yeah, depending. Maybe we say East Africa is Susu or Ichama. So it's quite versatile. It's a very African or at least international thing. If we say America, you probably call it group um, corporate savings, basically, right? If we say Asia, it's got its own name. If we say South America, it's got its own name. But about Basangana together for a common purpose or for a common goal. And in that common goal, there's contributions. And based on our contributions, the common goal is, is achieved. Most our stock filikaya are savings, are burial, are grocery stock fells, meaning that Sbegimali and then December, uh, city seven color song, it's by singing Como or singing Boozy, whatever it is that you guys would do, uh, and then and then January the cycle starts again. By merely me saying that, you can see it's mostly a consumption concept in 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 most instances, majority. But the wave is turning, and the wave is turning towards asset building, such as property. I am in real estate and property. Uh, this is a property show. Mm. If I'm watching here. How does that stock fell help me? Yeah, so I think the first point of departure, and I, and I liked your intro because you touched on the entry level of your property, which was 250,000, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if you look at it generally, a general, a, an average stock fell person in the country contributes about 250 rand or 300 rand, basically. And there's an average of 10 people. So, so, the, so and those people are usually in a lower LSM, if not grant, and then maybe middle SM. But when you start to go into middle, L middle LSM, they contribute more, 500, 1,000, 2,000 upwards. So, but if we now we say we want the lower LSM person to partake in the property of 250,000, which means that if we have 100 people that put 250 together per month, 
you know, they can now start participating. Um, maybe after my mates is running away with me, but after 10 years, they buy a property at 250,000 from you because there's 10 of them and they pay 250 rand each per month, as an example. So what that does, it brings the power of collectives. So if we clearly say, Kai, and you say, I want to get into property, but I'm not 250,000, bam, on the spot. But I know as a family, we can put 250,000 over a year as a family. Then that's the opportunity to get into it. Oh, so that's group buying. Group buying. Group because buying. I also remember, I think it was sometime last year, if not the year before, banks like FNB started introducing a scheme where they're saying it's allowed that you guys, up to, up to I think about 12 of you. Yes can invest together or save together, something yeah, like, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they took that, that definitely from a stock for concept, basically. But limiting to 12, where well, we don't limit the number of people you can have, right? So in a stock fair, you can have anything from three people, which is your treasurer, secretary, and your, uh, um, and your chairman, all the way up to all your members being 200 members. For example, a cooperative. Let's say it's Funustali Cooperative Minanao and have a cooperative bank. The minimum number of people that we need to have is 200 people. Already by doing that, we are we are fancy stock fell. So so yeah, I mean, if I were to even go a little bit deeper, go to is stock fell here, you know. So some people would say, arguably, uh, it's it's crowdfunding. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of that term, but yes, I have. yeah, but crowdfunding is basically funding towards something that we all are common and like with. The difference is that nine of the 10 times, whatever we common and we like it is out of the heart. Ah, I like that you're saving pets and therefore I'll crowdfund uh, that community or that NGO. But East Stockville says, yes, I like you saving pets, but I want the revenue out of it. I want, I want to own that thing or I want to be part of that thing and, 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 and work with you on that thing. So therefore East Stockville is slightly a bit different from a typical crowdfunding concept. Okay, um, how big is the Stockfell industry in South Africa in terms of numbers? Yeah, so I think, um, so you have about 8 million uh, South Africans that do, 8.5 and above, that do Stockfells. It's a 50 billion rand industry, if not the number one, probably the second biggest informal industry after the taxi industry, right? So if you just take Stockfell and taxi industry, actually, they're the two biggest, in inverted commas, informal industry. And I say informal, inverted, because... Like I said, Istokfell took me to a school. Isn't that a formal thing, right? Istokfell buys Ama Grocery. Isn't that a formal thing? So actually, Stockfells actually impact the formal industry. We just don't realize it, or it's just not connected the way that a westernized way will try to understand it, how it's connected. Um, and, and perhaps my, my thoughts around that is around financial inclusion. Right, because we all talk about financial inclusion. We all talk about, you know, we need to get more people financially included. I always ask the question is, what are you including them into? Because if you're including them in something that's already defined, then you're not doing a good job about it, basically. You need to do to, to financial expansion, meaning that whatever you have, you need to redesign it so people can include themselves in the way that they know how to. For example, stock files. So you've just explained over the past couple of minutes how our audiences out there or Ekasi Noble Property Development's mm. potential clients um, can get involved in collectively coming together and, and buying property, for instance, the likes of Abo Ekasi Noble Property Development or mm. wherever. It mm. doesn't have to be from Ekasi Noble Property Development. How does the Stockfeller app assist now developments? Say, um, Ekasi Noble Property Developments owners mm. or, or, or property developers mm. or uh, people who are in, in, in that property and development space, not necessarily people who are just coming in to invest, but also people on the bigger scale who are, develop, who are developing mm. um, properties. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a good point. So let's first take a step and, uh, and say, on the platform itself, the most successful stock files are property stock files. And why, I think it's important to understand why. Um, it's because a property is actually a physical asset that I can see, I can go touch. When Buddha says, here's the property, he said, not riding. I can go in, I can see, I can do everything versus a typical equity uh, that you buy at the stock market, whatever stock market is it, whether it's the Johannesburg stock market or the Cape Town stock market or whatever stock market you play in. And because of it's a physical asset, 
it gains trust very quickly. So, and that's what property developers have at their disposal, is that the ability to actually put up a example of what this physical asset that you're going to buy. So as a property developer, we always start with the question is, do you have the physical asset already there? Can stockfills walk into it and see it and taste it and touch it? So in, or maybe you lick the brick. <laughs> yeah, that's <how> it is, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but my point is that it's, it's something that you can engage with physically. You know? And so that's the first point of departure when we engage any property owner or any property developer is that if you want to talk to the stockfill industry, you need to realize that there are physical people. They want a physical taste and touch. So that's a point of piece of advice right? Um, from that point. The second thing that how we engage property owners, we're like, okay, is it a revenue generating property or is it you want people to come by and live in? Those are two different approaches as a property owner because if you're saying, no, 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 this is an investment for someone and we are going to manage rental through it, which is the number one ideal for stock files, uh, particularly depending which age group you're targeting. So if you're targeting a more stock file that's already established, uh, everyone is living in their own home, they're not looking to move out of their own home, but they're looking to invest in property that's gonna give them revenue and returns. So you also need to understand how you structure your relationship with the property or what type of stock files you're looking to, to go after. Uh, like I said, the most likely ones that get very out quickly are the ones that generate revenue because stock fills want something that they can get income out of but they want to know it's secure that I can see it, I can taste, taste it, touch it so that if tomorrow goes upside down we can easily sell it um, and I say easily very loosely but that's the concept that's that's how we sort of we sort of guide you through how you should structure your value proposition to the stock fill industry to our particular to our platform, which we then give you access to multiple stock files on our platform. So it also does cater for people who are probably earning, uh, owning maybe 100 rentals. Yes, 100 so rentals, and you're looking to now say, okay, how do I offload one rental so that it doesn't sit on my asset book, maybe? Because, because now by you offloading, it's owned by someone else. It's not sitting on your asset book. It might not be a liability. Is that, now I'm talking financial stuff. It's not a liability thing for someone else, basically. So which means that, for example, e, e rate and taxes now it doesn't sit on you as a property developer. It now sits on the stock file. But because you are a rental agency, as an example, you make sure all their returns come back having covered all those things. For example, we have a, we have a stock file that um, went and bought uh, apartments, buildings uh, in Cape Town, all right? And now they don't live in Cape Town. In fact, most of them live up in Gauteng, but it's generating revenue from them. Through the platform, the property plays its revenue back into the stock file. Then the stock file members uh, get their returns, each of them, uh, via an approval system through the platform. And then they withdraw that money, whether it's to their um, own bank account or whether it's via an e-wallet or whether it's via some any form of they would like to withdraw from. We provide those functionalities. So as the Hustlers Corner podcast mm. now, mm. Is it possible for us to say, for instance, I'm lobbying my audiences to say, guys, let's start a stock fail, man. Mm. Even if it's just 20 of us, even if maybe it's just 40 of us, mm. uh, and then we want to invest somewhere. Mm. The stock fail app that you guys own, mm. can it cater for even a, parts, a Hustlers Corner podcast stock fail, for instance, yeah. also, even if it's not in real estate? Yeah, yeah. So maybe let's... let's Take that example. Let's say we start we start a hustler property stock fell or a hustler stock fell. Yeah, let's say a hustler yeah. stock fell. What sure. will happen in typically, right? So we've decided to know, Tina, we are investors. Uh, and then whatever, and our leader is Usbu. So Usbu now becomes a uh, person, right? He's the one that ultimately is the leader of this thing, right? So Usbu would say, great, would come on Stockfeller. He would create a profile on Stockfeller as Sbu, and then he would go open up a group. And in that open up a group, he will define, this is the hustler's corner, uh, this is our goal, and this is how often we meet. If we meet, rather whether we're meeting virtually or we're meeting physically uh, in Linaga Sbu or whatever it is, um, you know, he, hold, he holds his meeting. How often do we meet? Monthly, weekly? So you define your parameters, how much you contribute. Let's assume that uh, there are 500,000 people and we're going to contribute 10 rand each, right? That is, that, 
then then that is that that is five million, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. If my math is good, All right? So yeah. <laughs> so 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 now we know that every month we're gonna have five million five million rand. Now Usbu, the second thing he does on the platform, he says, okay, great. Um, I've now created this group. Um, now I've added all these um, uh, 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 500,000 people. You would, how you add them, there are two ways. You can either share a link with them via the Hustlers Caller WhatsApp group, Hustlers Caller WhatsApp group, or via the WhatsApp, via the Twitter of the, you know, say, here's my group, here's a link, guys, go join this group. Or you add them with their phone number. I don't know if you know all your phone numbers of your, of your viewers. <laughs> but arguably, every person will then sign up themselves with that link and they'll go directly into your group. Right now, you have 500,000 people. The next step that you would need to do is now say, Yes, I'm the leader, but I need a team. So, and my team is a treasurer and a secretary. So, we then go appoint treasurer and secretary. Let's say you like me very much, you appoint me as a treasurer, great, and we like one of the other guys and we appoint them as secretary. I have a specific mandate as a treasurer, I need to make sure numbers make sense. I need to make sure if the man is buying a property, is buying property, you are driving the vision and the leadership as the chairman and the secretary is making sure that everything that we do is minuted and is reported back to the members. So that's sort of it. All of those things that I've said, for example, minuting, meetings, attendance gets done on the app so that no one can say, I don't have access. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's the decision that has been made by the leadership. So we provide that ability. Every single member that has added to the group or joined by themselves via the link has the ability to see how much we've contributed as a, as a collective, so how much is in the kitty, has the ability to see that actually Usbu says he's contributing, but actually Usbu is not. So Usbu is behind payments. They can hold you accountable as leadership. Say, but how can you lead if you don't pay, as an example, right? Or you're able to see all these members, how often of them are contributing. So every contribution we check on the platform. We alert which members are behind. We tell you, hey, Mr. Uh, X, who's, who's, who's one of the members, you are behind the payment, please make sure you catch up. Otherwise, it impacts the ultimate goal, right? Assume that come month end, we have our five million, great, everyone is happy, then it's time to execute. In executing, um, this is where the property developer would come in or any other opportunity we bring forth on the platform that you say, we like this opportunity. Most opportunities we bring on the platform, if not all, we have probably vetted them. So if we partner up with you, we will probably vetted your property development, make sure that when it comes on the platform, it is what it is, basically, that you're saying it is. So that people know they're putting their money in something that is already has done a due diligence. But you know, some people say, no, we are gonna do our own thing. Uh, that's outside Stockfella. That's what we call claims on Stockfella. So you, let's say you find your own franchise store. You guys want to buy a franchise store. So, and you partner up with the franchise provider or franchisor, right? In that partnering up, the franchisor says, okay, my franchise is worth 5 million rand. Then you would do a claim. You'll submit a claim in, on the platform. When you submit a claim, we'll ask you for the bank details of where you're taking the money to. Uh, we'll verify those bank details, so we make sure that it's verified. And then that submission of a claim, it needs to be approved by the executives before it gets paid out to that franchisor you've elected. Once it's paid out, in fact, even before it's paid out, a notification is sent to all 500,000 people to say, a claim has been done, by Usbu is paying the franchisor X in order to get this output. So then no one is surprised to say, but the money is gone. There is no money anymore. A and all these elements are come back to it, why they're important, right? So once that happens, and if there are no objections, so we give everyone on the platform one day to object to whatever decision has been executed because it's money. So we give them one day, no one objects, the system automatically pays out, the franchisor gets its money, and then the deal goes through, whichever format that you guys. But bear in mind, we're not part of that. So we don't know you've done your due diligence, you've vetted, you've done everything, but we assume that because your executives have leading powers, you've given them the ability, certain steps have been done in, in that impact. So now, while I'm talking to all those steps, they, take, they talk to about the three most important things when it comes to group savings or a collective or trusting. Transparency, we know what's happening, when it's happening, we provide it. Uh, uh, convenience, 
we don't need to be working out with 5 million rand cash <laughs> to go pay out. It all gets done electronically. That's why it's an app, it's fintech, um, you know, it, it's easier. In fact, when you contribute, when I pay into my stock fell, I can do it via EFT. I can walk to any retailer, big retailers, you name them, where I linked into them. While I'm doing my shopping, my grocery shopping, I can say, hey, I want to pay my stock fell. Here's my reference number. You pay it, it's linked, it's done and dusted. Convenience is great. It helps you from the last leg, which is security. Because now, which means that no one can leak out information there's 5 million rand on the table because there isn't 5 million rand on the table. Secondly, no one, we're not entrusting Usbu to walk into a branch and walk out with 5 million. Again, he, he could get robbed from that point of view. So there are elements that, that prior we came through to, the, to, to, to this world called Stockfeller, the fintech, people were having challenges challenges as a stock fell to be effective, efficient, and being productive because you've got all these challenges that you have. You need to walk to a branch. Uh, there need to be all three of you in there to, to in the branch, inside a branch, in order to instigate a transaction. It gets done all online now on the platform. Uh, you, need to, you need to now record which member is not paid, why are we short 100 rand, all of that is automated on the platform. You don't even need to pick up a book as a secretary. All you need to do is minutes, make sure people get the notifications, make sure people are attending. But when it comes to all the activities, particularly around finance, uh, it's all covered on the platform. And it provides that sense of comfort to know that, okay, we've trusted Usbu Siso to do one, two, three, and he's gonna do one, two, three, and report back to us. Um, yeah, so avoid people coming with pick foxes, pick fox to your house and looking for you. Government institutions, compliancy. Uh, my next question is going to come twofold. Mm. I'm actually going to I'm go, I'm, I'm going to start first number one and say, because you're already in the financial sector and you're dealing with uh, money, mm. there's institutions like about FSCA, right? Uh, previously called FSB. Yes. Those are government institutions. Compliancy mm. number one, and then number two. Uh, answer or, or an elaboration or, 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 or contribution I'd like to hear from you is safety and security of the platform because mm. Abantu ba investor gule stock fella njalo and the email zabo safety and security of um, people's funds. Yeah, so I think let's start with the compliance. the compliance. So we are registered, so we are a licensed FSP, registered with the FSCA, previous known as the FSB. So you can go on the FSCA website, don't even go on ours, go on theirs, search for us using our FSP number, 488-12, and then you'll find us, we are there. I myself, because I've got the banking background industry, I myself is what we call a key individual, meaning that I need to make sure from a compliance perspective, we do all that needs to be done to make sure Imal Zabantu is safe. Secondly, Imal Zabantu doesn't come to us safe at all. We don't have a big save somewhere that you think. It goes through what we all would be familiar with. It's called the trust account. And the trust account has got certain barriers and certain regulations behind it. We'll, we'll pack that aside. But for us to have a trust account, we need to, to, to adhere to those regulations. And for us, to, in order to receive that money, again, we need to adhere to the compliance of, of FSCA um, uh, accordingly. So what does that mean? It means that one is that, let's say, uh, it, means that, it means that all your money is insured. So according to FSCA, we need to insure your money basically, right? Um, two, we don't have access to your money. It's a system that have access to your money. Like I said, every approval has to be done by the executives in order to instigate that money movement, right? So therefore, um, if you really want to get to people's money, you must hold all the executives at gunpoint. <laughs> uh, but even then, remember what I said, every member gets a notification. And if any member queries that, that, that transaction, the system blocks it. So we have a two-layer security. We have, the, we have the executives themselves, which they get a unique one-time pin. So when you approve, I approve, the other executive approve, we all get different pins. We all have different profiles. Then we have the 500,000 members that guard us again, again, every single transaction um, that would happen on Stockfeller from a security perspective. Um, so from that point of view, plus we are actually NCR licensed as well. So we can also issue out loan, loans to 
the, the stock fell itself. If it wants to say, let's say the opportunity is 200,000 or 250, it was able to only put together 200,000, it's short of 50,000, we can step in and help the stock fall to get to the ultimate goal. So all of those things require us to follow certain regulations and security measures. Uh, and I talked a bit about security, um, uh, your data. I mean, we all know that, maybe not all, but Poppy, Poppy Act, we need to comply with the Poppy Act. Uh, when you come on Stockfeller, you get a privacy, a privacy policy that tells you everything we need to comply with in case we get a data breach, what needs to happen, what are the steps we need to take. So all those things we need to comply, comply with. Uh, but again, we do everything in our best to make sure that none of that happen. We provide security. That's why we have one-time pins. Um, that's why our, our security is SSL secured. Um, for those that don't understand, it's basically a certificate that says if you put in private information onto a platform, it is actually hashtagged. You, you don't actually see, it's only two systems that are talking to each other, but in between, it's actually hashtags accordingly. Um, so yeah, so we do, we do as much as possible, like any typical financial institution, to make sure that your data and your money is safe. The future of your stock fell any way or shape or form, you guys are planning to incorporate it into the blockchain technology? Yeah, so I mean, let's touch on blockchain a bit, right? So ultimately, it, it, there's what we call um, smart contracts that sit on the blockchain, right? Basically, it's, it's, it's to make sure whatever I said, you said is recorded and it cannot be changed. It's just like a transaction. That's why blockchain exists. So um, a stock fill would have a constitution that governs the decisions that the executives made. That is actually a contract, and we are planning to put it on as a smart contract, meaning that whatever decisions that were made has to follow that smart contract, it can't change. So if Sbu were to want to not to be the executive, there will be clear smart contract rules that are blockchain driven. Again, transactions. Um, they can sit on a, on, a, on a coin or on a blockchain, which is like maybe a Bitcoin. Um, so we can all go into Bitcoin and then that, that Bitcoin is sitting against a, a value, basically. Oh, these days they call it tokenization because Bitcoin is one of it, basically. But again, that's the future of, of, of stock files, the way, where we can take them. But I always say to people is that there's a difference between innovation and inclusive innovation, right? The things that you just touched on, they can easily become innovation or what also called exclusive innovation, right? Meaning that we can have them, but as long as people are not using the platform, then we are indirectly excluding, excluding them. Typical example, data in the country, right? Uh, before the spectrum is released, um, most data is expensive. By doing, by having that, you're excluding people from innovation. Just because of that, as much as the spectrum, but because it's expensive, you're excluding them. Or having a delivery system for quite a long time was only for the suburban areas, right? But it doesn't mean delivery system is not required in the township. So inclusive innovation means that sometimes innovation can carry on, you can build, but not necessarily bring it forth for the people to consume because they're just not ready for it. Uh, and therefore, you need to be clear when you say inclusive innovation, what is that that you are building at that point in time when people need it? So we realize that people need an ability to be plugged in into the ecosystem of the economy and there are multiple, multiple ways you can plug them. Blockchain is one of them. But we are specific to say that will come. What's important is to get the providers onto the platform. Hence why we build this, what we call the stock for marketplace, where we plug in property opportunities, franchise opportunities, and then we make sure that due diligence is done well there so that when you do invest in that, it, you know, um, it's success. The underlying technology really is just about efficiency, simplicity, and it can be a blockchain. That's not a problem. It's the it's the opportunity that becomes a, a question. Now, let's get into it. Mm. I would like to, for us, uh, all you hustlers and squatters out there, and all our property investors and our audiences, it's time to take out your phones and download the Stockfeller app. Let's get it done now, in real time. Yeah. Or Excuse you can me. go to www.stockfeller.com and go to our movie site, which is, which is great, in case you don't have an app-enabled phone. 
as well. So we provide that ability. Let's rather go for the one that accommodates everybody. www.stockfella.com That S T O K F E F E double L A double L A dot com or dot zero dot zero dot com. Even if you type dot zero dot zero, it will lead you back to the dot com. So and also the dot mobile. Ne? Yeah, it also yeah. works. Okay. Yeah. So go to login. Okay, I've already opened stock. Right. I've, I've gone to stockfella.com mm -hmm. with a double L, guys. Mm. I hope you guys are doing it simultaneously as I'm doing it as well. In, in case you didn't know, Istokfella is spelled Istokfella Nizul. It's I S T O K F E W L A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We empower Stockfells. Obviously, in some places or on the internet, you'll see instead of an F, you'll see V. Because in South Africa, because of our history and Africans, mm. the V and the F, sometimes they'll, yeah. they'll be used by different people. So we mm. empower Stockfells to do more together. Join more than 3,000 Stockfells that are already on the app. Yeah, yeah. We've got more than, almost more than 40,000 people on the app. Wow. We've done more than 200 million through the platform. Wow. Yeah. So we've... Look, we mostly focus on property, right? Um, but we've bought franchises for stock files. We've bought farms for stock files. Um, we've built uh, houses for stock files, which is under property, of course. Um, we have stock files that invest in Bitcoin. We have stock files that do purchase order funding, um, which means that if you're an entrepreneur, you need funding for your business, the stock files help you. So we have different types of stock files um, that come on the platform to achieve a, a typical goal. Uh, what we tend want to, what we're building now is trying to understand what do you as a community, which is our stock file, need? Whether it's solar panels, right, because of the crisis that we have, then how do we enable you as a community to save and get that through our partners? So that's where the, the space we play in. And then it says, join more than 3,000 stock files who trust Stockfeller to save better, invest smarter, grow together. Yes. We are here to serve a collective. Calculate how much interest you can earn from our different products. Desired savings target, 1,000 rands. As an example, as a starting. So you choose the saving that you want. It will tell you, ideally, this is where you'll end up uh, based on the interest typically provided on the platform. So we do provide two types of interests, uh, a typical savings account interest and a typical 32-day notice interest, um, which will gain you interest as you target your goal because the ultimate thing is your goal which will give you more interest back. Yeah, so, so yeah, definitely that. And the number of members, in this case, it would say, for instance, 197. Yes. Number of months, in this case, it'll say like 20 months. Yes. And then it'll give you a button that's written calculate. Yes. Total to save with interest. Yes. Monthly contribution per member. Mm. Investment maturity date. Yes. Basically, you know, we also understand financial literacy is a challenge. So, so, so I just do the numbers quickly in my head, and you know. But some people struggle to say they come to us say we are hundred. We don't know what to contribute. So we'll build that tool to assist them to alleviate the challenge of not knowing um, and easily calculating it for them. So that's 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 what they do. And after that, it says apply now. I'm assuming. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's what it does. But it also gives you like a picture of a cell phone to simplify it and it shows you the actual interface and the buttons mm. and it shows an example of for instance Utuso Nkosi yes. with his Stockfeller or her Stockfell's wallet. Yes. What is a Stockfell's wallet? So um, when you get your returns from your property rental, um, it comes back to your group and the group distributes it back into your wallet. And, and why, why is that important? Because you can decide I want to reinvest my returns. So in other words, you don't need to go, it doesn't need to go back into your account with whoever you are banking with. You can reinvest back in it at zero fees. So whatever goes into your wallet, out of your wallet on Stockfell at zero fees, we don't charge anything for it, basically. So it allows you to what we call um, um, capitalize your interest. And as we know, interest is one of the seventh wonders of the world, basically. So the more interest you put back, the likelier you get more returns back. But if, if you want, you can withdraw from your wallet. Hence why we give you a wallet to do what you want. But some people, here's the nice thing, some people earn interest or earn and return from that stock file. And then now because they owe a different stock file on the platform, then they pay that stock file. Mm. So you find that the money now circulates. Now the person doesn't need to worry about paying their stock file. So we always say to people is that you might want to have three types of stock files. One that will give you money, Right, one that you just save and one that it's 
party, um, or whatever it is, <laughs> right? And the one that's of party is actually paid by the interest that you could be earning if you don't want to reinvest that interest, basically. And then it continues to say how to navigate our app. Mm. Exactly what you're saying, just to reiter reiterate, manage as many Stockfell groups as you want on Stockfell. Mm -hmm. Do you belong to a grocery and investments club? Do you add, join, and manage as many Stockfell groups as you like? Rest assured, Stockfell will provide you with the tools to track contributions and payouts for every group. Mm. Number two, easily contribute to your Stockfell from home or at major retail outlets. Mm. You can make easy payments to your Stockfell on Stockfeller, making transactions quick and convenient. To pay in store, get your group reference number on the app and make payments at major retail stores nationwide. Mm. Number three, get your Stockfell payouts paid securely into your bank account. Receive payouts from your Stockfell easily into your personal bank account. We offer electronic funds transfer as well as e-wallet payments for all Stockfell users. So the wallet is linked to my bank, bank account. Yes, you can link it back to your bank account. Uh, what we're trying to do now is link into an actual physical card. So if you get paid, you can walk into any retailer and purchase and swipe. Uh, whatever card provider, there's two major card providers, Visa and Master, basically, and you can swipe. So that's the next, so that's when we talk about evolution that's the next thing that we are trying to put together for you so that you actually know that i can leave my phone at home and actually walk out with the card or if you've got a nice smart phone you can link your card to your smartphone you can just tap your phone so there's multiple innovation ways it's like i always say i always look at inclusive innovation i just don't want to build i know the tech is there and we can enable it easily very quickly it's just I always ask where are we with our customers are they ready for the next step and as they're ready for the next step we introduce new ways to them our track record speaks for itself thousands of stockfells trust stockfella number of users who trust stockfella over thirty-four thousand. Funds transacted on Stockfella over 190 million. Obviously, this is you can you can tell it's a bit old. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit old. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you're giving me updated figures. Updated figures. Yeah. Stockfella users who hold shares mm. in an investment or small business over 6,000, and awards won. Mm. Alpha Code, App of the Year from MTN Business, mm. um, H2 Ventures, KPMG, FinTech 100. Um, SA Breweries, well, SAB Foundation, yes. Social Innovation a dis and Disability Empowerment Awards for 2020, Alpha Code, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And maybe let's talk about that, um, some of the awards Award. that you've won and some of these big multinational companies that have sort of um, given you guys, I don't want to call it their endorsement like you mm. need it, but yeah, like a nod. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's very close to us, particularly the SABF as well, because that's our recent last award that we won. And of course, all the others we are very grateful for. Um, I mean, the, the MTN app, app Award, we've won it twice already. We were runner-ups. Uh, so, so, so in three occasions, uh, we've been in there um, and the first time we won the best South African app the second time we won the best fintech and I think the best fintech for me is very gracious because we were up against the bank a very big bank so you can imagine you know me and Donna Sekasi saying okay now I'm up against every coder every resource that they've got and then to come up on top that was that was that was something for me special and then I, the reason I also love the SABF one as well um, is because it's a social impact it has empowered us in order to say, how does this business impact you? And the kind of tools that they've given us um, in order to grow has been has been great. I mean, ever since they've come on board, we've been able to grow to the new numbers that, that I've just mentioned to you right now. So so the, the, the awards, as you say, almost give an endorsement, but almost like a, a nod that you say, you are headed in the right direction. Um, and this is the right direction to go into. Um, and, and, and we're so proud of that. Uh, and I think, but we never rest on our laurels. I always tell the team is that just because we won an award does not mean that we must rest and think we are the best. There's no such thing as the best. We are not competing with anyone. I always tell people, even the banks, we are not competing with them. Um, we are enabling a community to do, to do their best. That's, that's what we, we wake up to, um, our full why is to take the power of the collective and connect it to opportunities so we can change people's lives. It's not about being the number one 
um, financial tech solution. We're not in the game. It's about every client that comes to us. How do we make sure they live better, feel better, um, have a better life? Whether it's they don't now need to take out money at the XC and travel a long distance to a branch somewhere that's far away from them. We've done good. We've saved them money. They're living a better life. We are changing their lives for the better good. That's what we, we, we are about as Stockfeller. And the ability is through technology that we're doing that. And you've also told me that Stockfeller is affiliated or linked to some retail outlets out there where there are members, for instance, I could just walk into this retail store mm. and pay for my stock fella. Can you mention some of the um, retail outlets that are out there that you guys are officially affiliated with? Officially linked to. Yeah, Pick and Pay, ShopRite, um, Checkers. That's why we say major retailers, um, except Woolworths. <laughs> um, Pep, we're linked into Pep, Ackermans. Um, so uh, who am I leaving out right now? Um, even through, if you, if you have an MTN app through, you want to pay for your stock for through via the MTN app system, you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, um, we're trying to make it easy. Wherever you are, the system is connected to it, basically. Um, and also you can do it via your card. So if you've got a, a card, a bank card, on Stockfeller app, you can load your bank card and contribute towards your, your, your stock fell. Um, it's just like if you're buying online, um, you're buying a shoe, same concept. You, you put your card details and again, security, all of that is tokenized, is secured. We don't see the information. We don't get access to the inf information. It's directly linked back into the bank. Every card payment you do has to get an OTP from your bank. So again, we don't have access to that. Only you would have access to that. So so allows you to make that payment. Um, and, and we're introducing debit orders soon so that you don't have to worry about it because some people do forget um, to pay their stock for and then the executives start panicking. So we're introducing debit orders so that you can now Put a debit order towards your stock file if you have a bank account and contribute like that from that point of view. Bankers have got great careers and they make a lot of money. <laughs> Why would you decide to leave banking and go start a fintech startup? What, what inspired you to get into the space to become an entrepreneur? I think, I think as a starting point, you should be saying, asking, um, as, a, as, as an engineer, what inspired me to even to go to finance <laughs> in the yeah, first place? Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, I'm an engineer, but you'd be surprised. A lot of engineers are in finance um, yeah. uh, because we understand systems and processes very well. Uh, uh, yeah, no banks. Yeah, bankers do make good money, um, you know, and they're taken well off by the bank. Uh, I mean, you get great discounts on your house, you get great discounts on your car, so it's very difficult to exit the system once you're in it. But I guess it's because of the greater calling. Um, and the greater calling to me was when, at that point in time, I wanted to start my own stock fell and I wanted to be, um, to emancipate myself and my friends, uh, to buy property, to do things. But I got to realize, even with these great degrees, masters in engineering, masters in finance, I was still stuck in the manual way of doing things and I couldn't move past that. Um, even though I was running it on an Excel and, and, and I'm good at Excel, you know, if I say so myself. But, you know, I just got stuck because I just didn't have a tool that was designed for our people. And that's where it, it, it sort of started. Uh, because I was like, if I'm getting stuck and I think I'm smart, how about a typical man on the street that doesn't have, might not have all these opportunities and all these degrees, how do they feel? How do I take everything that I've learned, especially in Pumekasi, and make it easy for Abandwasekas? Make it easy for if a school says, look, we want to raise funds from our parents, but we don't want a principal to disappear with the money. There's the tool, because a school is a stock fell, if you think about it. It's a community. It contributes to um, kids going to a, going to a, a zoo. But sometimes, because you have people that are not honest, sometimes that money disappears. And here's a tool that to make that life easier. So my heart went into how do I make sure that my people? One is we move this 19th century industry to the modern age so that they can become effective. Two, we connect them to opportunities with that little as they have, whether it's 50 rand or 20 rand or 10 rand or 200 rand, but they can still get the same opportunity as someone who's got 250,000 rand. How do we do that? Without them being smart, and, and, and no doubt about it, everyone is smart in their own right. But when I say smart, being financially smart, understanding um, returns on investment, what does that mean? Understanding um, 
how to calculate interest, understanding all these things that we take for granted as people that sit at the bank. Some people just, you know, it's not their nature. They're not used to it, um, but they still want the same opportunities. How do I make it simple for them? Uh, and the best way to do it was to step out of the, the glass towers, if you want to put it that way. I'm an engineer like you, um, electrical to be specific, but I got mechanical. into Mechanical. Oh, mechanical. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. mean, electrical. When are you electrical? Yeah. Ah, okay. So I got into the entertainment industry and cool, you know, I'm always humbled and blessed that I've done great in the entertainment space. But when I got into starting this business, Mo Fire, with mm. my partners, it became one of the most difficult things I have ever done. Now we are about to turn 10. It's been about a decade. How difficult or how easy was it for you to start this Stockfell um, concept or yeah. business? So it was very difficult. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. Uh, one is um, funding in general. So I took all my savings, all my uh, pension funds that I got and I plugged into the business because I believed in so much. So no safety net. I also just got married. So having to look at my wife and say, eh, there's no more safety net, that's also difficult, all right, because it's not an easy thing. Now she becomes a breadwinner. Uh, and then if you're not a strong man, you take that in a negative way. But you know, I took it a very positive that she's giving me an opportunity to be who I believe I need to be for the better of the community. Um, then you touched on, on regulation, right? So, so, so now, I need to know all about this compliance, this regulation. I can't just take your money. That almost took us a year to even get across the line. Um, one is, 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 as much as engineering, one could think is a great degree, it, it's not recognized by the FSCA because it doesn't involve finance. So now I need to go study something that recognizes why I end up studying masters in finance because I needed something that is recognized so that when I approach and say, I'm equipped, I've got the knowledge, I can be, I can, be, I can be approved for a license. So some of the barriers that you get even before you get that license, it's not a bad thing. It's also a good thing. It's got, it's got its up, up, but like I said, financial inclusion and financial expansion, I needed to be included and included, I needed to follow certain rules. Um, but I have different ways of how you can change that, right? Because ultimately there was no risk in my business at that point in time. So you not giving me the license, uh, didn't make sense, right, at the way I, I saw it. Rather, give me the license, then put measures along the way that says, hey, Tepo, once you've reached 100 people, we want to see this. Once you've reached 10 million, we want to see this. So give me targets that enables me, not ask me to reach all of the things, and I don't even have one rand in the bank account. So that's why you're fully risking with the belief it will work. Right? But if it doesn't work, you've lost all your pension fund, you've lost all your savings, you start all over again. And as the time I was 30, 32, 34, so I've already built enough career, now I have to go back into the system and find a new job and start all over again. Those are risks that any entrepreneur faces that you, you take because of how the system is structured um, and, and the challenges are there. And I'm sure with MoFi you see similar things along the way. Um, so, so, and again, now the, now the other thing is, even though you could get the license, you need to have someone with experience to guide you. So in other words, you need to be supervised. Not many black people are in that position, right? And, 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 and it is what it is. You can't hide it. It's how the country is in back. So luckily I, found, luckily, I found good friends of different color, different skin, which I'm still good friends with today. Some of them that are still helping in the business that actually guided me. Say, okay, I'll be your supervisor in this thing so you can get the license because we believe in the bigger good that you're trying to do as well. So those are the challenges that you face with. In return, when a, when, 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 a, when a company comes to me, a particular black company says, we need a, a key individual, I put up my hand because I know the challenges that they're gonna go through. So I become their key individual and I guide them. So I'm currently a key individual on two companies, which I'm guiding them, which to get, one is getting their FSP license, one already has, and they do money transfer. I help them to monitor it and so forth. So I understand the challenges to get into this financial inclusion that we are talking about. It, it's, quite, it's quite a steep thing. And, and I said insurance, right? That insurance means that for them to give you insurance, you need to have a minimum amount of operational cost. You haven't even started operating. You suddenly have a team of five people. You have to pay salaries. But you have to keep a minimum of 
uh, one month or two month operational cost. I could be using that money to do other things, but it has to stay in the bank. Again, good reasons in case anything goes wrong, there's money there to take out. There are very valid reasons, but sometimes I think they are valid at a certain point in time of your growth, not in the beginning. Um, yeah, so those are the challenges faced. Last point as we wrap it up, your passion for helping people mm. and caring and just having that social impact. Mm. I want you to expand more on that. I know you touched on a little bit that you are helping some uh, entrepreneurs or some small mm. businesses currently. Yeah. And also how does Stockfeller app um, incorporate or, or, or play a role mm. in impacting society? I know a little bit earlier on you spoke about cooperatives, etc. Yeah, yeah. So, so the power of collective, I think, is the way to go. And I believe, not I think, I definitely believe is the way to go. And if you look at history, and if you look at other countries, you realize that Germany was built from a collective power. VW, we talk about VW today, it was, it was after World War II, I think, and then they needed to rebuild, and all their, their people, their people that the mechanics put money together and say, we are here, we'll, we'll start this thing. It's a stock fell. Um, you know, uh, 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 big corporatives are in America. Kenya has got one of the leading corporatives, right? And they run, they are big from that point of view. So collective power means everyone gets the ability to be what we call shared ownership, right? And it's when you do shared ownership is when you start transforming the industry. If we take, so if we take South Africa as an example, 80% uh, of the wealth is owned by 20%. Of the of 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 the of the of the people, the minority in the in, in, in this country. That cannot be the case, right? That has to transform. And the only way to transform is called shared ownership. We need to share um, in ownership. Uh, and shared ownership does not mean that I just come and take. It means that I need to bring my, my, my five loaves and two fishes so that you can feel that I'm doing something. So as a stock fall, uh, if we believe as a community, we can fix our own problems. And this is where we come in. We, we, we love working with communities and say, okay, what is your challenge? Tell us your challenge uh, because when you've got your five loaves and your two fishes, we can find someone to help you with your challenge um, from that point of view. Uh, we, I work closely a lot with uh, institutions, for example, research. Um, a, a lot of students out there, master's students, do research around stock files. We help with that to say, okay, come through. Of course, from a data privacy, we do what we need to do, and then do your research so that the more research that comes out of this informal industry, the more formalizes it become, the more people get to know about it, the more learning. So we're striving and we're powering that, that part as well from a community perspective or research perspective. Um, uh, we look for what we call productive assets, like a property. So we, we go out and look for businesses and that says, we have an asset. So on our website, you would have seen their own an Uber. So we found a great partner that actually allows you to buy an Uber car for 200,000 Rand, and then they find the driver for you. But if you want your own driver from, from the community, they will help train the driver, uh, put them in, in, in the Uber, make sure that they run the Uber successful, and they manage that driver so that you get the value out of your own asset. So we look for productive assets and where we partner up with, whether it's a car, whether it's a, a cow, whether it's a car, whether it's a building, Anything that you can touch, taste, and feel, our job is to go find it, vet it, and bring it to you as a community so that you don't have to worry, you sleep well, your money is good. Incredible interview. It's been so amazing. I know I've been getting a lot of you guys who've been asking me, Smuda, some of us are still young, we're students, but we are seeing these opportunities that Ekasi Noble Property Development keeps speaking about. We understand how expensive land is in the north of Johannesburg or some of the opportunities that Ekasi Noble Property uh, Development has. And we'd like to invest, but we can't afford yet. I really do think there's an opportunity here for mm. Mr. Muloy to, um, with what is explained, for us as the hustler community of this podcast to start our own stock fell. So even for those that can only afford 100 rands a month or 500 rands a month, mm. we put together a stock fell so we invest in some of the opportunities that Ekasi Noble Property Development has. But equally so, number two, mm. I'm also seeing another incredible opportunity which I would like to introduce you to the owners mm. and the shareholders when, when time does permit of um, Ekasi Noble Property Development. Mm. I really do think there's a lot they can benefit from the Stockfeller app. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, look, we are open to any synergies. Um, uh, we can't say we are for Stockfellers and we don't do collaboration. 
because the stock for is about collaborating. So any opportunity, any meetup, any engagement, we're always open because we know that if that's through collaboration, we get the power of the collective. So definitely, yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to the to the, to the Hustlers Corner stock fall. I'll look out for it. Uh, I'll make sure it does the right thing. I won't be the treasurer. <laughs> we'll let others be treasurer, but uh, I'll keep the eye on it for you. We'll get a trusted finance guy. Yeah, um, yeah. Who, yeah. Who, who, <laughs> But I know a couple of friends, and I know some guys who've got an FSP license. Prob preferably, it'd be nice to have somebody with an FSP license who's in the finance industry, mm -hmm. uh, who's willing yeah. to come on board and assist us get that done. That is, if it's you out there, maybe even if I don't know you, you've got an FSP license, you're in the finance space, you're watching this episode right now, reach out to us. Uh, uh, I'm really, really interested in coming up with, uh, well, putting, it's not even me. You guys have been asking for something like this for quite some time. Mm. We've even done episodes on virtual Mkuku with Penuel. When you guys are always on some, guys, let's support each other. Mm. Let's start some sort of a group where we come together and put our funds and invest in things that we all, you know what I mean? Like we've been talking about this for quite some time. I'm very excited that finally there is a FinTech solution for it. And for that, thank you very much, my no, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for inviting me and great job. Well done to you. Kudos to you. I think not only do I look up to you, a lot of people look up to you and continue to do what you do. And if there's anything we can assist you with, please shout out. That definitely will be. And thank you very much. And lastly, mm. I would like for you to look at that camera over there. Oh, that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Young entrepreneurs, um, mm -hmm. young bankers or mm. students right now. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, some words of inspiration and motivation to our hustlers and squatters out there. Yeah. So this is, this is one lesson that I learned very quickly because I was once in your space, right? So I come from the first generation. So I've talked a bit about these master's things and went to, to university, but I'm the first generation to do that, right? What does that mean is that my family, uh, um, my mom took a risk on me put everything in, in me, in order to be successful. And luckily it, it turned out right. Um, but what that means, it means that I'm a liability to Yena. And, and what I mean from that perspective is that if anything happened to me when I was growing up at that point in time, um, Uma Mama would have lost the asset that she invested in, that she believed could change not only um, our family life, but lives out there, out there. So what I did and I advise I always give to young people, if you are that first generation and your family is invested in you, there's nothing wrong in taking out a life cover. Um, um, what you need to put in place, which is the second lesson, is a good trust, is, is a good trust or a good will. Right, which then will say if that if anything happens and it pays out, there's a clear will that will develop a wealth for your family. If in case you are not there to do it, so those are my my my, my note from a financial advice perspective, because um, I am a financial financial advisor as well. So to give you an idea to say look at those things. But as an entrepreneur, um, keep hustling. Um, that is the most important thing. Is that don't give up. The difference between uh, a closed business and an open business is that the the open business the person continue finding ways uh, to always keep it open because you don't know who will walk through your door. Maybe Spoo will walk through your door as he walked through mine. So keep hustling. Congratulations. Very, very proud of you, my brother. And thank you very much. You're actually the first person um, that I've ever interviewed who've given that advice because that's mm -hmm. an advice that has made an impact in my life, mm -hmm. the life cover and the trust, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the trust advice. Yes. I think it's the most incredible advice that you guys have to go deeper and research more and speak to other uh, professional or accredited uh, financial advisors or people with the knowledge like mm -hmm. he, he has, and he is an accredited guy as well, and find out more about how you can pass on that wealth. Yeah. Because I think we preach more about hustling, hustling, mm -hmm. creating these businesses, ownership, ownership, but I don't think there's enough voices that are actually emphasizing on the importance of now, how do we pass, pass on, on this wealth? Yes, because this yes. Bonele Malukshin, Babu Spanbani did really well. Mm. In Ganezake, Besfunda Nazo, they were all Spanbani Yashona. Just mm. a few years later, the business dies, dies. because there was not that um, transference Transfer of wealth. Yeah. So when you're speaking about that life cover and that trust advice, brilliant advice. Thank you. No, thank you very much, sir. Nya bonga, Mr. Mloy. Nya bonga, Mr. Mloy. Have a lovely one. Guys, I'm taking your more fire. Oh, yeah, sure. It's only drinking some of the knife. Nya bonga. Nya bonga, Putram. Thank you very much, guys. Let's go out there and do our thing. Hopefully, you guys appreciate this episode. And the Property Talk Show is proudly brought to you by Ekasi Noble Property Development.